Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today with two more simpler examples on this convolution that we're discussing. The convolution sum that is in the discrete time domain. Examples. So let's say the input signal that is given as a step signal. And the impulse response of the system is also a step signal. And what we are asked is to find the convolution sum. So the convolution sum we know is y of n. We would be writing it as x of n convolved with h of n and which is summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity x of k multiplied h of n minus k. So basically you have to do what? You have to find x of k and h of n minus k and then you have to find the overlap that is you have to find the product for different shifted versions of h of k. So you know the steps. The step number one is to change the variable that is you find x of k you find h of k. So x of k would be the same as x h of k basically but let's say I draw it separately this is if the k x is you have it for 0 1 2 3 you have it 1 and so on. Fine similarly your h of k your h of k would be what? Your h of k would be the same signal 0, 1, 2, 3 and this would go to positive infinity this would be 1. Then you have to time reverse h of k that is step number 2. So if this was your step number 1 your step number 2 is to time reverse h of k. So now what do you have if this is your k axis now you have h of minus k you have it at 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and till the negative infinity this would be now 1. Fine. The third step is that you shift h of minus k to h of n minus k. So you find it h of n minus k now. Step number 3 h of n minus k. So now n minus k, this is non-zero till zero, right? So if I shift it towards the left, and I believe I moved the camera, no problem. So if I shift it toward the left, that is if for n less than zero, so what would happen? That it would shift to the left by n units, and now it would be, uh, it would be one from where? from negative infinity till n. Fine. You, oh well, I said about the time shifting that the shift would occur with n units. The basic definition is of shift. But you could also say that if n is negative, the signal would exist from negative infinity till n. If n is negative. Similarly, if n is positive, so it will go from negative infinity to somewhere n, some positive value of n. So, well, the, but the basic definition is that we would be shifting the signal by n units towards the right. Fine. Now, what do we do? In step number four, step number four is the multiplication step. So, step number four is you multiply and you and integrate as well. So, if this is your k axis, this I am doing a little step y, y of a, uh, y of n. Fine. So what would uh, be the case? X of k, have a look. So have a look. X of k is for greater than 0. Right? X of k is for values greater than 0. Fine. This is 1. And have a look. This y of n, no sorry, h of n minus k for negative values of n is somewhere over here n minus 1, n minus 2 until negative infinity this is 1. So have a look we don't have any overlapping region. We don't have any overlapping region. So we could say that y of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0. 
fine now for n greater than or equal to 0 the next case so let's say I draw it over here now what do you have this is your k axis now if you have your h of n minus k for n greater than or equal to 0 so if this is 0 this is n so the, the, the signal would start at negative infinity and it will end at n so the value is 1 negative infinity fine now uh, you you find the the overlap so have a look have a look uh, I'm drawing it again the same way I'm drawing it in the same way so if this is your k axis the 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 what 0 1 2 3 your x of k lies to the positive side fine and your h of n minus k lies to the negative side till negative infinity and it lies to the positive side till k equal to n till k equal to n so have a look we have a product the product region is what from 0 till n we have a product we have an overlap fine so I would write that y of n y of n is equal to summation now k would not be running from negative infinity to positive it would be running from 0 to n and what are the values x of k is 1 h of n minus k is 1 so I could write this as summation k running from 0 to n 1 to the power 1 and now the formula so the the formula is from mathematics which uh, you have seen in your mathematics book I don't have it written right now but summation k running from 0 to n of 1 this would give us uh, uh, n plus 1 this would give us n plus 1 fine so I would write it over here that it's n plus 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 so have a look now if this y of n is 0 for n less than 0 and it's n plus 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 so I could write it generally I could write it generally that y of n this is equal to n plus 1 multiplied u of n so now I have n plus 1 on the right side and u of n has uh, cancelled the effect on the left side fine so n plus 1 if you draw it if you draw the graph for y of n so how would it be if I draw it over here let's say this is your n axis this is your y of n so n plus 1 for 0 the value would be 1 for 1 the value would be 2 for 2 the value would be 3 for 3 the value would be 4 for 4 the value would be 5 and so on so can you not see that this y of n this is equal to ramp of n plus 1 you could also write it that this is ramp of n plus 1 why we saw that ramp of n r of n this is equal to n times u of n so if you have n plus 1 times u of n so this is ramp plus 1 times u of n fine let's say we have another example okay now uh, let's say your x of n we are now given in a sequence form uh, let's say we have 0 1 2 and 3 wait I don't have this 0 I believe well I have it so and this is and this is also equal to h of n which means the impulse response is also the same 0 1 2 and 3 and we have one arrow so y of n is again unknown so you know the basics you know the basics now you find x of k x of k so so you draw it graphically so that would be much better if this is the k axis so 0 1 2 3 negative 1 negative 2 etc so the arrow represents what that this value is at the origin so which means at the origin we have one two now to the right of the origin we have two which is at one 
and then finally we have 3 which would be located at n is equal to 2. This is also equal to your impulse response h of k. Now you find h of minus k. h of minus k. So if this is your k axis you would have it at 0 minus 1 minus 2. Fine it would be 0 otherwise right. So over here you would have it uh, 1 at 0 minus 1 you would have 2 minus 2 you would have 3 and then you would have 0 otherwise. Now the overlap if you need to find so for h of n minus k first we draw if this is your k axis so this would be n n minus 1 n minus 2 this would be 0 fine if this is for n less than 0. So the last point would be at n which is 1 at n minus 1 we have 2 at n minus 3 we have at n minus 2 we have 3 and we have 0 otherwise. So now if you need the product so y of n this would be the product of these two so you will have to multiply these so uh, well at 0 1 2 and 3 you have the value of the function 0 and 1 and 2 which is like this something fine and and then what happens is you have somewhere uh, to the left of 0 you have somewhere n n minus 1 and n minus 2 so you have it like this so if you have a look so you don't have any overlap no overlap So what does this mean that y of n is 0? y of n is 0 for n less than 0. Fine. Now for n greater than or equal to 0. So again you have to draw h of n minus k. And this time you would be shifting the signal towards the right. So this would be n, n minus 1, n minus 2. This is like this. 0 would be somewhere somewhere here, somewhere here, somewhere here, fine. Otherwise you have a signal to be zero. So now have a look. We would now consider different cases for n. So if n is zero, the first case is that if n is zero, you consider if n is, wait, 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 wait. I would make it n greater than or equal to 0 in this case. So now if I write over here that if n is 0, if n is 0, what do you have? You have the signal at 0, minus 1 and minus 2. Fine. This would be h of 1 minus k. So now the product would only exist at 0 position. Right? x of k is located at 0, h of n minus k is located at 0, that is 1, this is also 1. So you, you find the product y of uh, 1 would be, would be, y of 0 would be 1, y of 0 would be 1. Fine. If n is 1, So which means that this it be 1, 0 and minus 1. So this would be h of, well this was minus k directly, sorry. I made a mistake. So minus k is, that's fine, right? Then you have 1 minus k now this one. So now the product would exist at point 0 and point 1. So have a look, for 0 what do you have? For 0, you have 1 at both the points. No. Over here now you have a 2. So 2 multiplied 1 would be a 2. And plus, at 1 you have a 1. At 1 you have a 2. This would be a 2. So y of 1 would give us a 4. Fine. Now the next. For n equal to 2. So which means that the signal would go to 2, 1 and 0. 1, 2 and 
3. Now the product would exist at both the points 0, 1 and two, three, at all three of the points 0, 1 and 2. So for 0 this is 3 that is 1. You have a 3. For at 1 this is 2 this is 2. You have 4. At 2 this is 1 that is 3. So you have 4 and 3 and 3 6 10. So y of 2 is 10. Fine. n equal to 3. You have it at k, you have 3, 2, 1 now. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3. Now the product would exist only at 1 and 2. So at 1 this is 3, this is 2, you have 6. And at uh, 2, this is 2 and this is 3. So you have 6 again. Wait, 0 no, at 1 and 2 only, yes. So 2, 2 are 4 and... Uh, and three twos are a six. One and two. Two threes are and three twos. Yes, this is fine. So, so y of three is twelve. Y of three is twelve. Now y of four. So y of four. Now we find out if n equal to four. Now what would be the case? This would be four, three, and two. 1, 2, and 3, right? So now the product would exist only at point 2. So only at point 2 means what? That this is 3, this is 3, you have 9. Y of 4 is 9. N equal to 5. N equal to 5. So this would be 5, 4 and 3. So have a look. You don't have any overlap. You don't have any overlap. So which means that the signal y of n, this would be 0 for n greater than or equal to 5. Fine. Now if you, if you draw it, so if this is your n axis, this is your y of n axis, so at 0, uh, this is uh, 1. Fine, it's 0 for n less than 0. At uh, 1, this is 4. At 2, this is 10. At 3, this is 12. At 4, this is 9. And for 5 and greater this is 0 again. So this is your y of n. So that's all about it, okay? Now uh, let me uh, tell you that if you have a signal x of n and you convolve it with an impulse signal delta of n, you get the signal back x of n. Fine. And another property is that if you have let's say x of n plus k convolved with delta of n plus l, so at the answer you would have x of k plus l. So these are some uh, two properties that we may discuss uh, in the upcoming videos. So you just write it somewhere and we may we will discuss it somewhere. Now have a look, we were given two sequences, right? So let's say if you have x of n uh, is the input signal with length l1, then you have your h of n, your impulse response with length l2. So if you have y of n with length l, so this length would equal n1 plus l2 minus 1. l1 plus l2 minus 1. Just as have a look over here. The length of this signal was 1, 2, 3, right? You have l1 was 3 L2 was also 3. So L1 plus L2 minus 1 would be what? It would be 3 plus 3 minus 1. It's 6 minus 1 equal to 5. So have a look. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fine. So that's about it. That's all about today. That's all about the examples on discrete time. You write this somewhere. We'll see it after the, uh, after the continuous time convolution. Uh, uh, with some more examples when we are winding up convolution. See you in the next lecture with continuous time. Sell and take care of yourself and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers. Goodbye.